So when do you remember YouTube first becoming a thing? For me, I was in secondary school when the likes of Fred, Smosh, and even PewDiePie were creating comedy skits. A lot has changed since then, both on the platform and in real life. Content creators, they come and go. But this one? He left the platform in a particularly evil way. My name's Adrian, and welcome back to Coffee House Crime. Today, we're looking at the rise and fall of one of YouTube's earliest stars, Trey Sesler, and how he built a community around him before... Well, we'll get to that part in a minute. So for now, grab a coffee, sit back, and relax. This is the case of Trey Sesler. The story today takes us to Walla County in Texas. It was the early morning hours of August the 3rd, 1989, and the young Trey Eric Sesler was born. His mother Rhonda and father Lawton had one other son a couple years prior. He was now Trey's older brother, his name was Mark Sesler. By most counts, Mark and Trey had a typical all-American upbringing. Walla County, formerly a distribution town for cotton in the 1800s, now specialised in manufacturing and schooling. Trey's father Lawton was in the schooling industry. He was working at Robinson Elementary, and was a well-respected educator, being in that field for over 30 years. His mother Rhonda worked for the local newspaper, where colleagues described her as a precise wordsmith with a contagious laugh. The couple were married for 34 years. Growing up, Trey was pretty average from the outside. He didn't run into any problems with kids at school, he was never bullied. But he was relatively quiet and never tried to be the centre of attention. But things weren't quite so normal with him on the inside. This was first apparent when he opened up to a particular conversation with his teacher and doubt started to be cast on the boy. At the age of 13, Trey created a devious plan to call 911 and complain of a suspicious shadow that he kept seeing outside his parents' home. And he planned to hide in the woods across from his house with a baseball bat while waiting for the police officer. When the police officer arrived, he would then club him and steal his firearm, before driving to his friend's house to shoot him. While his plan fortunately never worked, it did result in him being evaluated by a psychiatrist. Nothing evident came from this though, the incident was eventually dropped, both by the police and by the psychiatrist. Nothing else ever came from this. And as Trey grew up through his teenage years, he seemed to settle. His family and friends saw his previous plan as a blip, just a strange moment that's naturally part of growing up. And as he matured, his interests developed. He had three of them in fact. His main interest was filmmaking. Movies were a great source of inspiration for Trey in his younger years. And in September 2006, just as YouTube started to become better known as a video sharing platform, and Trey already spending most of his evenings behind his computer, he put the two together and created his first YouTube channel, Lenscap Productions. At first, it was a very casual channel for Trey. He'd post short films and bloopers, mostly of himself, but sometimes including his brother and parents. Let me call you back. <laughs> you have some sort of stupid problem? Why are you interrupting me when I'm on the phone? I'm trying to get our- Appreciating filmmaking in a more animated tone, Trey also liked anime, a Japanese style kind of animation. And in late 2006, roughly a year after he'd started his YouTube channel, he decided to switch his content up a little bit. It was at this point forward that he would now be known as Mr. Anime. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mr. Anime Reviews. This new channel was a place for Trey to review the different movies and series of anime that he watched. Mr. Anime was known for having a straightforward and honest personality, opposed to many other reviewers who tried to impersonate a specific mood or opinion. For each and every review, he would say it as it is. He wouldn't try to sugarcoat anything, and he would apparently give every anime a fair shot. It was for this reason that Trey's YouTube channel exploded. In 2011 alone, he received over 1 million views, which at the time, was a pretty big deal. And it was throughout the years of 2006 to 2011 that Trey spent most of his time making videos for his YouTube channel, reviewing anime and eventually also video games. By the time he reached 5 years on the platform, he had uploaded more than 300 videos. Okay, that apple right there, you're gonna like that. Yeah, I grew it myself. It was a couple years ago though that I did that. But it was during this time that Trey's content started to gradually take a darker tone. 
In between his formal video reviews, he would often do funny comedy stints to break away from his content's usual repetitive format. And eventually, those stints would become more disturbing than funny. So back to Trey's interests. The first was filmmaking, the second was anime, and the third? It was firearms. He was a big fan of them, buying and selling dozens of them over the next couple years. He started uploading these skits to YouTube of him using these firearms, eventually turning those short films into full demonstration videos, either at an unlawful range or at a random building. Although his YouTube from 2010 to 2012 very openly endorsed firearms, there were no causes for concern found in his community. Trey, he often condemned gun violence, several times talking to the camera to rant about them. So, I don't know what's going on. You know, they had an article that were like, well, the economy's gone bad. Everyone's losing their job and getting mad and shooting everybody. Yeah, I guess that makes sense since all, a lot of the shooters lately had <laughs> recently lost their job. But, um, I'm a firearms owner myself, but, uh, it's, uh, it is a little bit disturbing to know that you could be a victim in something like this at these times. All the people that were victims, you think it won't happen to me, but sometimes it does. But seriously, every day I open Yahoo, I'm like, well, time to see what today, time to see what today's shooting is, and hey, there's another one. On the surface, Trey's life seemed unusual, but fruitful. Sure, he was different, at least by American standards at the time. But he'd not only just found himself a community, he pioneered one finding many fans in an unlikely place, the anime community. Things were not all too happy at home though. Trey, the things he fantasised about as a child, was still there now as an adult. Just, he learned not to share it, just to keep it to himself. For the most of 2011, Trey was living alone in his grandmother's home in Hempstead. She had recently passed away, and he was safeguarding the house for the foreseeable future. And while isolated in his own world, the schemes that he plotted in his mind to cause harm to others grew more sophisticated and dangerous. He became fascinated in historic school shootings and killers, those including the Columbine shooters and Ted Bundy. He also started to formulate plans in how he could deal as much damage as he possibly could. He had even downloaded satellite images of Weller High School, his former school, to construct paths where he could ram his car through a gate and courtyard. He would then get out of his car and claim as many victims as he could with his own 22 rifle. It was during this time too that rumours started to circulate online about Trey. Apparently he'd been using live animals, including his own pet rabbit, as firing targets. Damn. The prognosis for those animals, not so good. And while YouTube itself arguably had no effect on Trey's mental health, it did offer a window for others to see in on how he was doing. And what they saw is that, over the years, Mr. Anime, he was becoming more and more erratic. Whereas videos were once coherent and well thought out, were now becoming harder to follow, difficult to understand. Oh, how you doing everyone? It's Mr. Anime. Or you can call me Trey. You can call me the guy that does the video game reviews, or you can call me the guy that does all the gun stuff now. Uh, what I have here today to show you is a high point. Now, for those of you that are familiar with high point, you might have a very low opinion of them, or you might have a high opinion of them. In the most recent months, Trey's relationship with his father was also deteriorating. It was around Christmas time 2011 that he shared with a friend that he was planning on killing his father. His father, who was upset at him for leaving Glynn College early, prematurely, and giving up. Trey believed that his father had written him off as if he were the crazy and stable son that wasn't going to do much with his own life. This kind of perception that Trey had of himself from his father was false, but it would also be one of the many reasons he lived at his grandmother's home, away from his parents. Towards the end of 2011 to 2012, regular arguments between Trey and his brother and father started to crop up. These arguments are mostly around Trey's abuse towards alcohol, which was getting worse and worse. That would carry on for several weeks, until March. Well, hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Anime here. On March the 13th, 2012, Trey uploaded his 323rd video to YouTube. It was titled Mr. Anime's New Job. 
In this video, he shared with his fans that he'd been headhunted by a filmmaking company who'd offered him a job, of which he accepted. He also shared that although his uploading schedule would be reduced, he would still produce content, just at a slower rate. All of this, though, was false. Unknown to Trey's viewers, he hadn't been offered a job. And even unknown to Trey, that would be the last video he uploaded to YouTube, ever. On March the 19th, 2012, and through to the early morning hours of March the 20th, Trey stayed up all night. He was binge drinking. Those drinks would push Mr. Anime's theoretical thoughts into reality. In the early morning hours of March the 20th, Trey returned to his family's suburban house, fully armed. And his mother, brother and father, they were not expecting his company. Later that day, police were called to the Sessler home address. A call to the station citing unexpected noise coming from the property came in. It wasn't until the afternoon though that they arrived, after an external family member called the police asking if they could check in on them. They hadn't been returning their calls all day. They began searching the perimeter of the building before looking in through the windows. And that's when the horror movie started. Inside the house, Rhonda Lawton and Mark would all be found deceased with gunshot wounds. The home had been wrecked from top to bottom, with rifle casings scattering the floor, broken glass in almost every room. Carvings were found on the walls and doors with confessions, such as, Why did I do this? I love my mum, dad and brother. God forgive me, because I cannot forgive myself. Unknown to police, Trey, who, if it wasn't obvious, was responsible for the deaths of his family, then packed his car with over 100 ammunition rounds and his rifle. He then drove to Walla High School, which is where he graduated, and sat in the car park for quite some time. But he didn't do it. Later that evening, police were looking for Trey, and they would find him at a local friend's house in Magnolia. Following the discovery of his confessions all over the doors of his deceased family's home, Trey was arrested by police. Good evening, friends. I'm Dave Ward. I'm Adele Uchida, and for Gina Gaston, investigators say under questioning, Sessler admitted to committing several crimes. Eyewitness News reporter Jessica Willey is live with the newest developments. Jessica? And while held in jail, he later told law enforcement that he was ready to carry out his plans to take fire on the school, with a target of hitting at least 70 people. And supposedly, the only reason he took out his entire family was so that they wouldn't have to endure the pain and shame following his actions. The thing about my family is, um, I would protect them with my life, but um, at the same time, if anyone was going to hurt them, it was going to be me. And uh, I fire about four times, and I don't know where she gets hit, but I know it's somewhere in the torso area, and she falls like a kind of brick. Or they were the first immediate human targets in my sight. And if I was going to go out and do anything, they would have to go. Apparently, as soon as he took his first shot on his mother, he regretted the decision immediately. By now though, in Trey's mind, it was too late. He had to carry on with the rest of his family. If I did that, it was like, well... I'm already committed, really. Can't really go to my brother and my dad and be like, yeah, I just killed our mom. And I was like, okay. Right after I had uh, killed the family, uh, it was on my mind to, to do that. But by the time he got to his school, the weight of his actions had sunk in, and he couldn't carry on. The only thing he said to police is that it felt too real. And I'm like, there's my opportunity. Go ahead, go get him. I don't know, maybe it was just, uh, maybe it was just what happened was too real. Trey Sessler was sentenced to life in prison without the opportunity of parole at a later date. There was speculation that Trey died in prison, but that recently has been discredited, which means Trey still remains behind bars, and that's, uh, forever. Many of Trey's friends, both online and in real life, acknowledged that he had a fascination with violence. However, this was only in video games and movies, not outward in real life. 
They described him as a highly intelligent, slightly eccentric, and generally kind-hearted guy who seemed to, at times, live in his movies. They said there were no real warning signs, nothing to forebode the devastation he eventually did to his own family. The plans he had were terrible. It's actually quite easy to forget how much worse this could have been. And Trey's family? Well, they died. For nothing. Hi there again, and thank you so much for watching another video of mine today. I hope you enjoyed the case. If you did, please remember to like the video, and if you haven't yet, please remember to subscribe to Coffeehouse Crime. What do you think about the case of Trey Sesler, or Mr. Anime? What do you think psychologically happened to him to get into the place that he did? And why do you think he did it? Let me know in the comments below, either to share your thoughts or just to say hi, and I promise I'll try to get back to you. Thank you once again, folks. It's been a real pleasure and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Until then though, take care of each other. Goodbye.